operations. And um, yeah, uh, of course, we, we want to be able to, uh, to connect with the other side. So we need OCLC providers and consumers on, on, uh, on the other side uh, that uh, serve delegated COIs into Eclipse and that also allow to consume um, the, the link index and retrieve the list of links and display them in the, in the tools. Yeah, the, the, the major use cases I'm, uh, we are um, envisioning or, and which I also can show in part uh, today is uh, we want to be able to add a link right into the code. We want to consume delegated UIs of uh, link tar targets. We want to be able to generate traceability reports between code and, uh, and the model. And we want to cover uh, a variety of languages by um, a, a profile concept that allows to, to use various languages um, uh, in, uh, in this story. Uh, on the other side, of course, we, we want to see uh, what, what, is, um, what is done on, in, on the Git or on the, on the software development side. So actually, um, it, it, there is a demand for viewing code uh, in uh, in tools like uh, Cameo or uh, Doors Next, and uh, we want to add add links also from from this side. So the the core four operations: adding links, deleting links, consuming them, and navigating them. This should should all be possible in this content um, concept. So if we look um, into uh, the, the the details. I, uh, I think I, I, I switch over to a, to a brief demo that that shows where we stand right now. Um, so here, <clears throat> I don't know. Can I get rid of this? Uh, looks like that has to stay. Okay. So um, I mean, I'm in Eclipse here, and we have added uh, uh, a plugin into Eclipse a new view. We have generated a new view for Eclipse. And this view um, is uh, somehow uh, communicating with the host application with, uh, with Eclipse. So um, whenever I call a code that has OZLC links, then I will get the whole uh, list of links um, displayed right, right here. So this means this, a piece of code, what, what I've opened here, has uh, seven OCLC links. And when I click on them, I can easily jump from, from one to the next and uh, see, okay, here, um, there is a use case um, linked to a function. And I would like, uh, I would be interested in, in uh, seeing what that use case uh, looks like. It is um, a model element that has been um, added in uh, Cameo systems modeler. And uh, uh, of course, the, the, so the, this is the model data that's behind uh, this uh, element that had been, has been targeted from this function. And now I can also navigate into the details and see where that use case is shown in a use case diagram. And I can, I see there are more than, there's more than one diagram where that use case is actually used. Um, I can um, expand uh, a pane here and um, show the details that are associated with these uh, use cases. So right in Eclipse without having to um, change my work environment, I'm able to access the other side and uh, navigate into um, uh, basically the SysML model and examine the details. Of course here, the, these these other links are um, doors next uh, links. For instance, I can also open um, doors next. I have to um, authenticate, and uh, this will will always uh, take me into the into the into the uh, uh, the delegated UI of that uh, doors next. Uh, requirement. We can click on a on a requirement and just navigate uh, in, to the other side. Um, yeah. So 
um, consuming this is is it's very easy. It's very very convenient. It uh, uh, um, integrates seamlessly into um, uh, the, the user interface of of Eclipse. Um, of course, uh, would be interesting to see how how we can establish a link. So I just click the little plus, and we get a delegated um, search and select UI, and I, I can search for for instance, uh, use case, and I get many use case diagrams. Um, we can filter down to, to all use case diagrams we have in Magic Draw. And uh, here is, for instance, we, we go through some of those. And um, yeah, we can either link to the whole diagram. I can add a link to the, to the diagram, or um, we can also uh, link to an element inside the diagram. So when I, um, let's say, um, I'm looking for a certain diagram here, um, I link to this element, then uh, I can add that, that link to the code. And so it's, it's very convenient to search and select link targets to add them to the list. And when I, if I click on one of those, uh, I'm, it's very easy for me to uh, navigate into the details and just um, pull out the uh, the diagram and see where I have actually linked to. Okay, so of course it it would be important to be able to um, to generate a report. We we can do that. Uh, generate a report on the on the whole project uh, we have here now. Now this is uh, still um, very much in. Um, uh, work in progress, um, but what you can see is we can already generate a table where we have the file, we have the namespace, including the function name. Um, we have the other side, the element name, so uh, the SysML element name, the ID and the version ID as we are linking to version content. And we can also export that to a JSON or to some other format. Um, but this is something we we will have to um, to yeah work on to to produce a decent report. But basically, you can see that all the data we we need for it for a traceability report is is already um, uh, generated. Okay, so maybe quickly on the on the on the architecture. Um, we have um, taken uh, Eclipse here, have built a new view uh, for uh, Eclipse. Um, and then we have a, a whole Gen OCLC server, which is um, yeah, Dockerized and you, um, uh, which, which serves um, um, into the iframe, which is carried here in, uh, in Eclipse. And uh, so it is very, very easy to add a consumer like I have shown you uh, to Eclipse. Uh, you just install the Genos LC server. Um, you add an iframe to the UI and um, you can already run many, many um, standard tasks like connecting to, uh, to Jazz, uh, selecting global configurations, filter links by global configuration. All these things are built into the, into the product. And of course, we have to communicate with Eclipse. So certain events uh, like opening a new uh, document, a new, new code document uh, will be communicated to the, to the iframe and uh, we can retrieve uh, the links, uh, analyze the code document and retrieve the links that are in the document. Um, uh, the other way around, we need some listeners um, uh, in, in Eclipse, but it's a very, um, limited scope of, of work you have to do to, to integrate such a, um, such a consumer into a new, um, uh, into a new authoring tool. Um, yeah, and uh, basically right now we are, we are working against the REST interface um, to be able to stream the links into um, the, the, uh, the, the central link index. Um, in in the end, th there is also a way to to connect to other authoring tools 
that needs refinement, of course, in, in most of the cases. So you really have to look into the details what the tool can do and how it works. Um, yeah. Okay, but that uh, helped us a lot to, to advance uh, quickly and to, to build this solution with, uh, with little effort. There's a lot of functionality already built into the programming framework. Um, it's uh, like managing all or doing all the housekeeping, doing all the authentication mechanisms. Um, there are some standard functions via REST and uh, there, are, there are some standard OSLC functionality that's uh, integrated into the tool. And uh, yeah, when you, when you um, uh, actually plan to integrate yeah, make a, a, an authoring tool um, uh, OSLC compliant, then there is a, a standard to-do list you have to go through, and that's a very limited list um, of to-dos you have to go through to, to make that happen. Um, for us, there remain some really important next steps. So we have to finalize the link index for the Git links. Um, for the time being, this will be a very simple link index that just allows to uh, retrieve the links from, um, uh, from the authoring tool side and, um, and then get uh, the delegated UI of uh, code. So we have to add those uh, delegated code UIs and we have to um, uh, add links from the link partner, so be able to, to, to add links from the link partner, uh, from, so from the AM, CCM, QM, RM side uh, into our uh, projects. Uh, okay, so this is uh, the story I wanted to tell today. And uh, if you have questions, I'm happy to take them. Thank you, Christoph. That was clearly a very cool history you told us. <laughs> Uh, and uh, uh, while we're waiting for more uh, typed questions, I I'd like to ask what happens when um, you are uh, changing the code? Uh, is there any way that you can check for link valid 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 validity? Yes. So the link validity is a very important uh, subject and uh, we have we, we will build it or we have to build it into the link index. Um, it is something uh, that has to be triggered from the upstream tool, which is usually the design tool or the, the requirements management tool. So um, uh, there will be an interface that allows to, uh, to communicate these events and then set um, the link validity status to to suspect in the center link end. Yeah. Yeah, that's, I mean, very, very good answer. And, and I, I always have to say, my, my personal view is very strongly that OSLC needs global config management. So if you really want to do serious work in reality, you need a global config concept. And, um, and this is something that has to be in place. Uh, I mean, that the, the ELM platform has such a concept. I, I think if, if you don't work with ELM, you have to uh, somehow organize it in a different way, but uh, it is an important part and it makes uh, functionality like um, link validity a lot more complex. But also a lot more valuable. Yes, that's true. <laughs> it's, it's simply not valuable at all if you yeah. don't have it. Uh, another question I, I have specifically, I'm just taking the opportunity as being, being yeah. the host. Um, uh, is there a risk since you implement the links as, as comments uh, in the files that these are accidentally removed or corrupted? Yeah. Uh, I mean, of course, you can manually delete a comment line, and then the, the the link is then the link is actually gone. On the other side, as I said, if you if you refactor code or so, the comment lines will go with the code, yeah. and that makes it pretty robust. Yeah. So, so developers are used to managing these situations. Yeah. Yeah, you can always destroy your code with just one keystroke. <laughs> mm, yeah, that's yeah. true. 
Uh, and then there's a question from Jad. Um, so uh, it's a clarifying question. Is the idea to link from the source code in Eclipse to other OSLC providers, or is it the other way around? So it is, uh, it is clearly, bi it has to be bi-directional. And, um, and the, the only thing is we, we store the links in, on the code side and we, we, we store them only on one side and uh, we'll retrieve them from the link index whenever we need them on the other side. Can I ask a follow-up uh, to this? Yeah. Uh, how do you generate URIs for, for the source document? So in, in a way, every source file or perhaps every class would need to have a URI for you to form a triple. Yes. Yeah, it's basically from the information we have, uh, file plus um, file plus um, namespace plus function name, we basically generate um, a UUID and, uh, and we, we, yeah, we, we form um, a URI um, using the, the general CC provider. Interesting, thank you. Uh, so you said when you started that uh, the automotive industry is um, one of your target industries. H have you thought about the aerospace industry? <laughs> yes. Yeah, of course. We, we also work with some aerospace uh, clients. Of course, I think it, it, whatever you think, where, where you, wherever you do serious work, if it is in healthcare or in, in aerospace or in automotive, you need traceability and it needs to be a traceability across many different domains. And I think software is, a ver is, is an important domain. And this was just, this is just a first step into the subject because whatever I have seen so far was not precise enough to, to really uh, say, uh, yeah, th this is a traceability that's uh, th th that's um, fine grain enough. Actually, talking about Eric's uh, aerospace, Eric, uh, uh, this is solving a huge problem because the D178C standard or the D178 in general, so B, is very very explicit that if if you you have a, a certain level of. Uh, uh, Design assurance, this design assurance level. So if you are level, I think up to even up to level C, uh, you it requires a traceability for the software level requirements to the actual details of the source code, and and this solves a major or automates a, a major uh, a child addresses a major challenge in in those that need to address D178C. Yes, and that was why I um, especially asked for the, for the aerospace connection for, for Christoph. Mm. <laughs> yeah. yeah, definitely Christoph, you solve one of the major problem I think that the humanity are waiting for, is waiting for. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Great, great stuff. Uh, so I think we should really end on that note. Uh, 